All right, guys, uh, as you can tell, I'm not going to be here today. So here's a video of the lesson. Hopefully it makes sense. If you're having difficulties, talk to the people with you, around you, see if they can help you out, see if it made a little more sense to them. I will be available for tutoring on hopefully Wednesday morning. And come in, talk to me, send me an email, do something, whatever you need to, to help yourself to understand this. All right, here are the answers from the previous night's homework. We're not going to have the quiz today. We'll take care of that next class. So check all your answers, write the correct answers, and after you go through the lesson today that you're watching and listening to, ask the people around you. Talk to somebody. Get some help on the ones you didn't get right. Maybe we can figure it out, or you can figure it out amongst yourself. All right. As you go through, at any point, pause the video. Take the notes. All these notes should be going to your notebook. Don't just watch me. Write it down. Practice. Pause it. Do the work. Play it. See how I did it. And go back and forth. All right. We're going to solve radical equations. All right. So we're going to use a lot of our basic rules for equations to solve, except we're going to have radicals in there. All right. So starting with number one. Square root of x equals 3. If we use a little bit of thought on this one, I hope we can decide that our answer down here is going to be x equals 9 because we know the square root of 9 equals 3. All right? Not all going to be that straightforward. But to solve these and showing the steps, what we're going to do is to get rid of a square root, we're going to square both sides. Square root, square root cancel. I get x equals 9. I plug it back in and check it. I know I have the right answer. So that's the basic idea for the lesson today. All right, number two. Like I said, pause this in between, write down the problem, try to work ahead of me, and then watch what I do to see if it makes sense. Square root of 3x minus 2 equals 4. Same idea. I'm going to square both sides so the square and the square root cancel each other out. 3x minus 2 is going to equal 16 because 4 squared. Solve, add 2, 3x equals 18, divide by 3, x equals 6. All right, bear with me. I'm using a little tablet at my house and my kitchen table, so it may not be as neat as some of the others. Not that much of it is that neat anyway. All right, check it back. Make sure we're right. Square root of 18 minus 2, square root of 16 equals 4. That's what I want. I know I have the right answer. Always take the extra couple seconds to go back and check your answers. Alright, try number three. All right, pause it if you need to. Do the math and see if you agree with me. I'm going to do the math that I think you're going to do. x equals 7. All right, we're going to go back to the beginning. All right, so when I check this, I should have square root of 36 plus 6 equals 0. 6 plus 6 equals 0. Wait a minute, that's not true. The answer that we got did not work in my equation. 6 plus 6 is not 0, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this answer and say it has no solution. We did all this math correct and got x equals 7. We took the extra 10 seconds to plug 7 in to make sure it worked and it did not, so it has no solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll back up here in a little bit and figure out why did not this why did this answer not work? Right, if I go back to here, you don't need to really know why, but you need to realize seven doesn't work, so this one has no solution. If I get rid of this step, I got the square root of five x plus one equals a negative six. This is an issue because whenever I take the square root of something, I'm either going to get zero or a positive answer. 
every time. Square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. I can't take the square root of a number and get a negative answer. So from right here, this will never happen. We can never have a square root of a number equal to a negative, square root of anything equal to a negative number. So when we see this, we can stop and say it has no solution, or we can check our answer and realize it has no solution. Either way, doesn't matter. All right, number four. Four times x minus nine to the one-third power equals eight. All right, going into the previous lesson, that one-third power we need to realize and understand is the cube root of x minus nine to the first, but I don't need the first. So this one-third power turns into a cube root, so I'm gonna solve it no differently. To get rid of a cube root, we're gonna cube both sides. Cube and cube root cancel each other out. 2 cubed is 8, add 9, I get x equals 17. Alright, to check, All right, 17 minus 9 is 8, cube root of 8, because that's the one third power is 2, my answer works. So always, I keep saying it, go back and check your answers. Because back here, if you gave me 7s in the answer and you didn't mark it out, I would have to take off points because it doesn't work. Double check your math and make sure. We know that a 1 -third power is a cube root. That was the homework that was due at the beginning of class. Alright, cube root of 7x equals the cube root of 5x plus 2. Do what you think you can do. Pause it when you need to. Unpause it when you're ready to see what I did. All right, cube root on both sides, so to get rid of that, I'm going to cube it. Cancels, cancels. So I get x equal 1. Double checking it. I get the cube root of 7 on both sides, so I'm happy with that. Good answer, x equals 1. So to get rid of a cube root, we're going to cube like we did in the last class, last problem, and I just do it to both sides. Square root of 4x plus 5, subtract x, equals 0. All right, this one's a little bit different, because I have x's instead of numbers. So... What we need to do, before we try to square to get rid of the square root, we need to isolate the square root if we can. We need to do whatever we can to get that square root alone. So I'm going to add a x to the other side. And now I have my square root alone. I'm going to square both sides. Oops. So I get 4x plus 5 equals x squared. Because again, we square to cancel a square root. All right, I have an x squared, so my first thought needs to be I have two answers, or potential two answers. So I'm with quadratic formula. I'm going to complete the square. I'm going to factor, but I'm going to factor. x minus 5, x plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to get x equals 5 and a negative 1. So I'm going to plug it back in. Square root of 4 times 5 plus 5 minus 5 equals 0. Square root of 25 minus 5, 5 minus 5 equals 0. Good answer. Negative 1. So I do 4 times negative 1 plus 5 underneath the square root minus my negative 1. That's going to be the square root of 1 plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is not 0. And that's what it should be. So I'm going to get rid of that answer of negative 1, and the only answer I'm going to get is 5. That's the importance of checking your answers. So the difference on this one. 
add an x to the other side. Square both sides, giving you an x squared, which may, should make you think that we need potentially two answers. So I factor, get two answers, and check both. One works. Oops. One doesn't. I'm going to keep going. All right, the square root of 3x plus 13 equals x plus 5. All right, so, all right, I have my, I, my square root isolated all by itself. That's a good thing. So I'm going to square both sides, and I'm going to square them as a whole. Square the left side and the whole right side. I get 3x plus 13 equals whatever x plus 5 squared is. We've had this issue before, these types of problems. We need to remember that when we square something, and I square x plus 5, I need to multiply x plus 5 times itself. So it needs to turn into this, which is a FOIL problem. All right, so I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to subtract a 3x and minus a 13. And... I'm going to FOIL. All right, I got a squared, so maybe two answers. Add like terms. That's 10x, 7x, plus 12. Factor. I get x equals negative 3 and negative 4. Right. From here, I'm going to go back and erase this stuff. We should take both of these numbers, negative 3, negative 3, plug in negative 4, negative 4. Both of them work. I'm just not going to show that math, and I have two answers. All right, but take the time. Go back and plug them in. All righty. The fun one. All right, last one, I believe. Let me double check. Oh, two more. All right, I have the square root of x plus 21. Subtract 1 equals the square root of x plus 12. That's probably the most complicated one we're going to get in this chapter. Something that looks like this. All right, I've said at the beginning, let's go back a couple problems. When I gave you this problem, we tried to isolate the square root, so we moved the x to the other side. Since I have two square roots, I really can't do that. So we're going to square both sides. So I'm going to square the left side as a whole and square the right side as a whole. So the right side becomes x plus 12. The left side, since I'm squaring this, I need to write it twice. Square root of x plus 21 minus 1. Square root of x plus 21 minus 1. FOIL. Square root of x plus 21 times square root of x plus 21 is x plus 21 minus, multiply those two, square root of x plus, minus the square root of x plus 21 minus another x plus 21 underneath my square root, plus 1, and I'm going to move this over at the same time. No, no, I'm going to leave it there. Equals x plus 12. All right, so I foiled. Square root of x plus 21 times x plus 21 is that x plus 21, minus one of those, minus another one of those, plus 1. All right, so let's add like terms on the same side. I have... 21 and 1, so I have x plus 22. I have negative 1 minus 1, giving me a negative 2. Square root of x plus 21 equals x plus 12. So I, if I have negative 1 square root of x plus 21 minus another square root of x plus 21, that's negative 2 square root of x plus 21. All right, now I'm going to solve. All right, I'm going to subtract an x. They cancel each other out. I want to get this alone. My, I need to get this square root 
all by itself so I can square both sides. So minus 22, negative 2 square roots of x plus 21 equals negative 10. Divide by negative 2. Square both sides. Minus the 21. I get x equal 4. All right, so let's go back to the top. I'm going to square both sides as a whole. The left side turns into a FOIL problem. The right side, my square and square root cancel. So I FOIL the left. Square root of x plus 21 times square root of x plus 21 is x plus 21. Minus 1 of those. Minus 1 plus 1. These two are like terms and combine to give me this. I add the 21 and the 1 giving me a 22. To be able to get rid of that square root and solve for x, I'm going to need to get that square root by itself. So I subtract an x, subtract a 22, and then I divide by negative 2 and get the square root of 2x plus 21 equals 5. Square both sides, subtract a 21, and I get x equals 4. If you go back into here and put a 4 into both sides, you're going to get 5 minus 1 equals 4, and there we go. There's my final answer. All right, so we've had the last couple problems. Make sure if you have a parentheses squared, it's that same parentheses twice, just like here. When you square x plus 5, you write x plus 5, x plus 5, and you FOIL both sides. All right, that's the lesson. Use the rest of this. Oh, no, I lied. Again. All right, let's solve this one. Quick and easier one. From last night's homework, I can write this as the square root of x, square root, and I put that imaginary too, cubed equals 8. All right, so now to solve, I'm going to square both sides. To get rid of that square root and then to get rid of a cube I'm going to cube root both sides 64 if I don't know is 8 and 8 2 2 2 2 2 2 cube root groups of 3 2 times 2 gives me x equals 4 you could have also wrote it as the square root of x to the third. No, I'm sorry, back up a sec. The square root of x cubed equals 8. All right, writing it with the exponent on the outside. Cube root both sides. Then square both sides, and you get to the same place. So putting the cube root on the inside, you need to square first. Putting the cube on the outside, you need a cube root first. But both get you to the same point. If you have any questions, come see me Wednesday morning, send me an email, do something, and let me know what you're having issues with. We will have the quiz next class. Have a great day.